こんなところで死ぬつもりはないおとなしくしていろよ Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Briareos Kerensky, and welcome to the review of Full Metal Panic Fight Who Dares Wins. This game is based on the fourth Full Metal Panic series, Invisible Victory, which is at its eighth episode as I'm writing this. The game is made by Bandai Namco, and if this didn't ring a thousand alarm bells, let me add it's done in Unity. Now, as I've said in my Little Witch Academia Chamber of Time review, I have absolutely nothing against that engine. It can deliver some beautiful visuals, but for Bandai Namco, Unity is an excuse to do games with the least amount of effort possible, starting with terrible graphics and the games themselves that play as good as the graphics look. <laughs> Fight Who Dares Wins is a turn-based strategy game featuring arm slave on arm slave battles as seen in the Source anime. The story opens with four skippable missions recapping the events of the first two series, Fumofu isn't included here, and then 31 missions representing Invisible Victory, divided into 26 story missions and 5 secondary missions. Secondary missions can be replayed at will to grind for money or experience. Complete all story missions and you can tackle the game again to uncover alternate scenarios. However, there are only four of these alternate scenarios and only one features one single new mission. Every other scenario is a cutscene leading to an illustration. I can't deny that one of these scenarios is very funny, but that's about it. Fight Who Dares Wins comes out as the anime is still airing, so there are no steals or movies from it, only a handful of illustrations throughout the game. There are no differences between the two stories, at least up till the last episode currently aired, the eighth, if not for minor cosmetical changes like the uniform worn by the Namsak chief of police. I won't spoil how the story goes, but I'm not particularly fond on some plot points used to explain the whispered and exotic technologies like the Lambda Drive. In the game the story is brought forward by the usual portraits talking to each other. Every line of text is fully voiced, I'll give the game that, but it's a far cry from the anime, with action sequences represented by either black screens or white flashes for gunfire, and all dialogues are kinda slow. During battles you control up to four armed slaves against an often much larger number of opponents. However, with the exception of other characters relevant to the story, every enemy is inferior to your units and within an hour you'll be able to dispatch mobs with one or two shots. Arm slaves have four hit locations. Body, representing the machine's health. Head, used to aim all weapons. Arms for guarding, aim handheld weapons and close range attack power. And lastly legs, for mobility and dodging. Normally weapons spread their damage all over an AES unless pilots have the aimed attack ability. You soon learn that this ability is vital, otherwise enemies will take an eternity to be killed. The effectiveness of destroying AES limbs is very limited and you will always aim for the body, especially when around halfway through the game everyone will be able to one-shot mods. Against bosses the strategy varies a bit, you first take care of their heads to drastically reduce their two hit chances and then go for the body. The game offers a large variety of weapons, knives and swords, bazookas, anti-tank daggers, pellet and armor piercing shotguns, flamethrowers, assault and sniper rifles, but you'll quickly gravitate towards non-explosive weapons you can aim where you want and with the longest range possible. Enemies are incredibly dumb and they'll be line on the closest target. Once they reach firing range, they'll simply stop there and attack. 
Throw in the mix narrow roads or even simple decorative elements on a plane, open area, and enemies won't be able to move correctly and they'll get stuck or form queues, the later arrivals unable to attack. Only a few enemies use sniper rifles, so your units will be able to fire on them without fear of counterattack. Sosuke and his AES become almost invincible well before mission 20, even without any grinding, and you can just park him in front of an enemy army and have him either destroy everything or evade attacks while the others rack up experience with his. <laughs> There is no variety in objectives. With the exception of a single mission you have to survive for a specified number of turns, every single task involves destroying any and all opposition on the map. Combat sequences can be skipped, but if you do so the game won't outright show parts hit and damage dealt, you have to remember the numbers. The super and deformed armed slaves are cute, but they look all the same throughout the game and destroyed parts don't change shape or even texture. Attack and dodge animations are very similar between different weapons, so you'll quickly skip them to speed up missions as much as possible. There are special animations for special attacks, which look like ripped straight from Super Robot Wars, and those show the AES with normal proportions, while menus and in-game graphics show them deformed. There are only four playable pilots, Sosuke, Mao, Kurtz and Clouseau, all with a different skill tree. However, all the skills inside these trees are all the same, prerequisite might be different, and only a handful are truly useful. For example, the request support skill allows the Tunan de Danan to provide off-map attacks or deliver supplies, but this isn't available in all stages, ASs carry many weapons, and off-map attacks aren't particularly powerful even when maxed out. Skills that improve dodge rate, increase morale for special attacks, or those that aren't directly linked to increased damage or to hit chances are only useful in very few instances. So skill points, which are shared between pilots, are better spent to increase stats. Arm slaves can carry a finite number of weapons and heavier their loadout, less frequently they lacked. You can improve ASs in a number of ways, but again you'll gravitate towards firepower and health. Maybe dodging, but at the end of my second playthrough, with my pilots well above enemy's level and maxed out stats, bosses would still be almost sure to hit even when evading and ASs had their agility stats maxed out. The combat system is simply boring, and the interface doesn't help either. The game doesn't differentiate between attack and counter-attack weapons, defaulting to the former, forcing you to select what you want every single time. Unless you specify an AS part as a target, units will always spread damage. There is no automatic weapon selection based on range, nor you can change weapons when looking at two hit chances, you have to back off, select a weapon, and then finally check its two hit ratios. Enemies will get stuck in whatever objects are lying around the map, and so you will in narrow roads that might look large enough for two ASs but aren't, due to every single unit having large impassable hitboxes. I appreciate that Bandai Namco tried to change things a bit and made fight, who dares wins different from Super Robot Wars, but the resulting system is an absolute mess. The game isn't particularly long, maybe slightly more than 10 hours on the first playthrough, and any subsequent tries can be completed in 2 or 3 hours. And if you are a trophy hunter, you'll have to restart the game at every alternate ending, with all of your skill trees, AS customizations, loadouts, and part of your money, but luckily not character levels, reset to default. This process is incredibly redundant as no enemy will be able to stop any of your characters from the second time you play the game, and I was happy in just completing the illustration gallery. Eh? 
The game is available on Asian markets fully translated into English with Japanese voices. At the time of this review there is no official word of a possible localization for Western markets. Not that you'll want to play Full Metal Panic, Fight, Who Dares Wins, it's an horrible game that further cements Bandai Namco as the kiss of death of anime tie-ins. I hope you have enjoyed this review and you stick around for more. Briario Skarensky, over and out. <laughs>